Okay, I think we're recording. Hi, Anne Louise, how are you? Hi, Karen, just wonderful, how are you? I am fantastic. I am so honored and pleasure, um, pleasured, honored, humbled, <laughs> um, that you agreed to meet with me today for an interview for the audience of Women's Abundance, uh, which is a site that we started um, really right before COVID hit. Um, because I've been doing these women health panels um, and bringing um, women like yourself, uh, doctors, practitioners that are at the forefront of women's health from nutrition to medication to alternative uh, and functional medicine. So with COVID um, and shelter in place and quarantine, we really want to have speakers like you speaking to the audiences um, everywhere, anywhere, since we can't meet in person. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, now for, for all of the listeners out there, I am so excited because Dr. Ann Louise Gittleman is indisputably the first lady of nutrition. She is a trusted source on detoxing, um, body, nutrition, women's health, understanding the impacts of environment on our bodies, and more importantly, our hormones, and more. She's a New York Times bestselling author, and, is, and she's also written more than 30 books. And today, I'm going to show you a little bit about this one. We're going to talk a little bit about Before the Change, um, which is one of her books that I absolutely love. Um, also, I wanted to let everyone know that um, Anne Louise came from, um, is a graduate of Columbia University. And besides being a New York best time selling author, she's also one of the top 10 nutritionists in the United States. Um, and she's received the American Medical Writers Association Award for Excellence, as well as a humanitarian award from the Cancer Control Society. So she is a huge proponent of not only women's health, but I think health in general. And I'm, I'm just really excited that you're taking time out of your day to be with us. Thank you. So, um, Anne Louise, I think um, I would love to get started with um, this book. And I thought... Um, Chapter six is, is something that I think a lot of the viewers on Women's Abundance would be interested in, which is um, the right perimenopause um, vitamins and minerals, zapping anxiety, insomnia, bloating, nervousness, and irritability. Um, if you, I know for me, I didn't really start thinking about perimenopause until I was already forced into it after. And I think a lot of women don't think about perimenopause and menopause in their 20s and 30s. And that's actually when they really should be starting to think about it from a nutrition perspective. So could you share one or two tips that you would offer younger women in their, in their 20s or 30s to help them prep their bodies for perimenopause and menopause? Like, what would that look like to you? Um, Karen, that's a great question. I, I think for women that are in their 20s and 30s, I would tell them to think zinc. I think that the mantra for those in the 20s and 30s would be to think zinc. And why zinc is so important is because it's a precursor to progesterone. And what we know about progesterone is that it is the antagonistic hormone to estrogen for which there is too much in the environment in terms of the estrogen mimics. And because we don't make enough of our progesterone because we, we are lacking certain necessary vitamins and minerals, including zinc. So thinking zinc to me is really extremely important. And it's also important in the age of COVID because it's such an important antiviral mineral. So the question is, where do you get zinc? Well, you can get it in a supplement, maybe 50 to 100 milligrams daily. We're doing testing and finding, Karen, that so many people are exceedingly deficient, even those that are taking zinc supplements. So you've really got to be taking one that's absorbed properly, like a zinc glycinate, for example, or picolinate. And you've got to be eating high zinc foods. So you and I both know that a high zinc food would be mostly found in animal products. You'd get, get it in your red meat, you'd get it in your, your eggs, your cage, your cage fed egg, eggs, eggs that don't do drugs, from hens that don't do drugs. And you'd also be finding it in pumpkin seeds for those that are vegans or vegetarians. But through, throughout the country, every time I do testing, I find that most people are very zinc deficient. So zinc, again, is a precursor to progesterone because it's antiviral, it's good for your hair, it's good for your skin. It's very good for wound healing. So for those of us that are concerned about how, they love, how you look with your skin, your hair, your nails, very, very important because it'll actually prevent it, any of these issues from occurring. 
I'd also say besides zinc, because that's my number one favorite, because everybody is now talking about it because of the viral considerations, you'd have to consider magnesium. Don't you think magnesium would be the second one to consider? And when I look at magnesium, I look at people that, that don't, don't have magnesium and are usually very anxious or very irritable, don't sleep properly, get up in the middle of the night. I mean, it's, it's absolutely, I would say it's absolutely epidemic what we're seeing in terms of zinc deficiency, uh, zinc and magnesium deficiency. Most people need, and this is the caveat here that I want everybody to, to remember, you need about five milligrams per pound of body weight. So for those of us that weigh 100, that would look like 400 milligrams a day. No, actually that would be five milligrams, 500 milligrams a day. Five, mil, five milligrams per pound of body weight. So that's 500 milligrams per day. If you, if you weigh 150, it's 150 times five. Many individuals find that they're taking magnesium, but not enough. So you need to take it till bowel tolerance. It'll help with your calcium deposition. It'll help with your sleeping throughout the night. It'll help get rid of your anxiety. It also helps with skin because as a skincare person, I think you would be very interested in knowing that it actually helps to retain water in the skin. So it's, it's, it's exceedingly important as a calming nutrient. It's kind of your all-time chill pill, but it also is important for beauty. So it is important if you're going to be supplementing that you look at your vitamins and minerals. It needs to be two to one in favor of magnesium to calcium. And because we're all so irritable and so anxious these days and so nervous, you've got to really raise the ante a little bit. So I would say, my dear, zinc, magnesium, and number three would be progesterone. Mm -hmm. Why progesterone? Because it is the antagonistic mineral to too much estrogen. It's important because it's so good for the brain. It's not just in the ovaries, but it's actually in the brain. And it's because it acts as a natural anti, I would say it is an antidepressant, a natural antidepressant and antidiuretic. So it's exceedingly important in terms of, or it's, it is actually a diuretic. It'll actually allow you to retain all kinds of fluid. So progesterone, magnesium, and a little bit of zinc. Those three would be most important for a younger woman. And most women that are, that are menstruating in their 20s and 30s don't really think about progesterone. But if you have cycles that are very short, that's usually a symptom of of progesterone deficiency. Oh, I love that. I had forgotten that because I always think of estrogen dominant things, but I love that. So shorter cycles could potentially be a sign of progesterone deficiency. It's usually always a sign of progesterone deficiency. And how do I know this? Because I've always had a short cycle every 23 days. And then like clockwork, it was every 23 days. It should be every 28 to 30 days. And so when I learned about that, I started taking zinc because it's the precursor to progesterone. And lo and behold, the cycle went to 28 to 30 days. So all this is from my personal experience because I've had enlightened self-interest all my life in reference to health, healing, and the environment. And if it worked for me way back then, it can work for everybody that's listening and watching this video today. I think that's why you're called the first lady of nutrition, uh, Anne Louise, because, because it is so innate to you, all of this, and just your years and years of, of studies. I mean, you've been doing this for more than 40 years now, so it's, it's, it's tried and true. It's tried and true, and it, it's also because you, you need to be out there with women of all ages and stages because what was happening to our mothers during the perimenopausal and the menopausal stages is very different to what, than what's happening to us. The environment is so toxic. We're living through a toxic nightmare of perimenopause and menopausal symptoms. And the symptoms, quite frankly, Karen, have changed. You know, typically when you're going into the menopausal stage of life, women think that the classical symptom is night sweats. Well, that's not a classical symptom for many of us. It could be lack of sleep, not being able to sleep through the night, or even tissue dryness or irritability. Mine was irritability and lack of sleep, and I never thought it was menopause because who wanted to think about that in our late 40s? Right. It's the M word. <laughs> yeah, and so you know, I, the other reason I want you on here is, is you know, it's, we need to reduce the shame around this, right? Because women are going to go through some form of it. It's just a natural part of life. So there should oh, be shame, you know? And, and no, there should be. It, it should be a glorious transition, almost like your second spring, but your body starts to hold you hostage. And so that's not the case anymore because of the toxicity of the environment. And that's a real issue that needs to be 
discussed and then and then looked at in terms of so this is the situation what do we do to replace our toxic body care products we go to your products Karen Holly because you've got some clean products that you talked to me about uh, before the camera started to roll. We've got issues in terms of taking natural hormone replacement, maybe a topical progesterone cream. You need to take the perivitamins that I talk about in the book, especially your zinc and your magnesium. Those are the two most important. Uh, yeah, I loved this book. And I really, I, I think I'm going to have to give it to my sister and my niece, because the other thing that I really want women on here to consider, uh, whoever's listening to this, is um, if you're a mother of a young girl, like, I would want to be taught this even at, at, at a young age. Like I invite my niece, she's only, um, she's just a, a teen and I'm sharing this video with her once we're done recording in Louise because the more children hear it, then they'll know when they, when they hit their twenties and thirties, they'll be like, I remember when my aunt told me about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Super excited. Um, let's, I, I want to get, to the environment in a minute and and i know that people are going to have questions about your your recommendation around progesterone because there's so there's a lot of controversy back and forth around that but you were you were recommending topical cream is there a specific for for most people it'd be a topical cream and you want a progesterone cream that supplies you with about 20 milligrams of progesterone activated progesterone usp certified progesterone and depending upon your age and stage of life, you may need to take it twice a day or at least once a day. Most women, if you look at the calendar month, should be taking it, I think, on days 12 through, their, through the, the, the time that they start to menstruate. But for women that are not menstruating, it's still important. So for those of us that have stopped menstruating, like me, I still take it from days 12 to days 25. Oh, fantastic. What great advice. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Well, because it's so good for the brain and people don't realize it. it's not just in the ovaries, it's in the brain. It gets me thinking clearly and I go to sleep at night and I wake up just once. I used to wake up four times. Oof. Yeah. And we all highly, highly progesterone deficient all my life, but who knew? I didn't know about zinc until I had to learn about it because of, as I say, my enlightened self-interest. So between the zinc and the progesterone, people would be on a very good course of action. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move into when you and I spoke uh, a couple weeks ago, you were talking to me about something that has not been talked a lot about yet in, in society, and it's gaining more, um, more traction now. And that was the topic of the copper connection with estrogen and the relationship to potentially Alzheimer's. Can you share with us what, what's going on in that area and, and what you wanted to talk about with regard to copper and Alzheimer's? You know, the, it's, it's interesting because this is new news that really is not new at all because we've been concerned about copper for years, at least many of the alternative healthcare practitioners. I learned about it when I did a tissue mineral analysis with my, tet, with my hair. And I found out that I was a copperhead. I was actually storing too much copper in my tissues, which was making me highly anxious, highly nervous, highly high strung. And that's when I learned about the zinc connection with progesterone and learned that copper is connected to estrogen. There seems to be an affinity. The more copper you have in your system, the higher your estrogen levels can, can be. So the, the way that we need to counteract that is with the zinc. That's why that zinc is so important because zinc is to copper what estrogen is to progesterone. So that came to me through two very important I would say that they were real pioneers in the industry. One of them was Dr. Paul Eck for tissue mineral analysis. The other was Dr. John Lee, whose name you may recognize, I who introduced me. I knew John Lee way back when. He helped me with this book and another one, quite frankly, or the precursor, I should say, to this book, because unfortunately he's passed away. So um, copper is very connected to estrogen dominance and estrogen in the system. And there are lots of copper sources in, in the diet. You should take a look at avocado, high source of copper, nuts and seeds, as well as tea and coffee, very high sources of copper. And they need to be balanced with actually a little bit more zinc. So that's why taking a zinc supplement from 50 to 100 milligrams a day, as I've mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, is really key. But when you and I spoke, I had just discovered some new research that was done by a Dr. George Brewer at the University of Michigan, I believe, who suggests that the 
epidemic of Alzheimer's is very connected to the copper pipes that many of us are using for our water supply. And copper became very prevalent in about the beginning of the century, right around the time we've seen a rise in Alzheimer's. So since the 1940s, many homes that are using copper pipes, about two thirds are still using copper pipes. And it was his suggestion in his research that you need to actually assess your water quality report, which you can do easily online with the name of your locale and your state. And if it's above 0 0.01 per parts per million, 0 0.01 per parts per million, then you have to get rid of your copper water pipes. You've got to get a water filtration system that blocks copper and stop taking copper. This is a big caveat for many of your viewers, you stop taking any copper in vitamins and minerals because there's usually two to four MCG or MGs actually, it's actually milligrams that are put into many multivitamins and minerals. So he has seen an increase in Alzheimer's that he was able to show in test animals. And the caveat is that most water filtration systems can remove copper if, there, if part of that water filtration is actually a reverse osmosis. And it's also important that we all stop taking excess copper in our vitamins and minerals. So you've got to now do a real audit of all the vitamins and minerals and see where it's coming because that copper is inorganic. And that's the copper that can be exceedingly toxic. Oh my gosh, so I love that tip. Thank you so much. I mean, I literally was at, at getting a new water filtration for my house and it was going to be a reverse osmosis, but now I'm going to research even more to see how how effective it is at, at copper because i i'm in an old home and it does have copper pipes and they thought that was an advancement right so oh they um, the years ago they absolutely did but i have to tell you something so interesting when i first started doing my nutrition which was back in the 1970s i was a nutritional consultant i worked for a psychiatrist a nutritionally oriented psychiatrist that did tissue mineral analysis on uh, children primarily children and we would find high levels of copper in those children that were highly hyperactive so there's something about copper in that whole area of connecticut where i was working and they all had copper water pipes in those days so we would find that if we reduce the copper by adding more zinc to the diet and to the supplementation that the behavioral patterns really change so there's a lot to be said for the body, mind, and spirit connection of copper to zinc to progesterone to estrogen, and now to Alzheimer's. Oh my goodness, a lot for people to think about. Um, but I, I really I really think women and probably everyone are going to need to read those labels because so many multivitamins have um, just traces of everything in them, right? And then the other thing I'm finding interesting about vitamins these days is the fillers end up being toxic for us as well. So, so that people have just got to really read the labels on the, on these multivitamins. We have to be food sleuths, vitamin sleuths, absolutely. But it's not just on your vitamins and minerals. It's on your body care products. It's on everything that have some of the estrogen mimics that we were going to discuss and you alluded to in the beginning. Yep. So yes, so it's getting natural on all different levels. It's the paints, it's the plastics, it's the pesticides, all of those act as estrogen mimics. And since World War II, there's a plethora of estrogen mimics in the environment. And I think that's why so many women come down with all kinds of cancer from breast cancer. I think a lot of it is environmental as well as ovarian cancer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know because I was an insanely healthy person and to have gotten ovarian cancer, everyone was shocked. <laughs> everyone was shocked. But luckily, I'm so body aware and so body conscious. I caught it early enough at stage 2C. So it only had spread to my uterus. So I didn't have to have chemo, thank God. Thank God. Um, yeah. But let's move into the environment and all the xeno, um, xenoestrogen. So in Before the Change, again, you guys, my, one of my favorite books of hers, but mind you, she's written 30. So um, <laughs> Anne Louise has a lot to choose from. But who's counting? Yeah. <laughs> but um, what I wanted to say is in, in Before the Change, you talk about, um, a, about the hormonal responses to macronutrients and environmental aid agents like xenoestrogens and how they can evoke um, a woman's body um, negatively. So do you want to talk about the impacts of the xenoestrogens and then also maybe share with women who have not done studies on this what they should be looking out for um, and you know what they should be not only educating themselves on but teaching their, their daughters um, and nieces as well? 
I think the real key here is to understand that the xenoestrogens can be a thousand times more toxic to the estrogen receptors than normal healthy estrogen, which in and of itself can be a very healthy and healing hormone. So having said that, how do you detoxify all those xenoestrogens? That's really the key, because we're all exposed. I'm exposed, you're exposed. If you're going to the gas station and you're getting one of the receipts from the gas station, pumping the gas and so forth and so on, you're, you're, you've got a little BPA on your hands. So I would suggest that you have to look to the liver. The liver is really the key in all of this. So to detoxify all the xenoestrogens, the estrogen mimics, you wanna make sure that your liver is in tip top shape. And that means making sure that phase one and phase two detoxification is really up to snuff. You do that with three nutrients that actually can take the toxic estrogens and metabolize them into something healthful. Those three nutrients are choline, methionine, and inositol. Choline, which we're heavily deficient in, methionine, an amino acid, and inositol. 500 milligrams of that three times a day will detoxify all the unhealthy estrogens into an estriol, which is considered the cancer, the, the least toxic cancer-free estrogen that we have on the planet. And that's exceedingly important for the estrogen that you're taking in, in the xenoestrogens. And it's making the liver do its work properly because these are lipotropic nutrients, exceedingly important to detoxify the liver, to decongest the liver, and to defat a, a fatty liver. So that's what I would suggest. It's an old tried and true formula that I learned from Dr. Atkins. May he rest in peace. So I, I've studied with some of the best guys on the planet. And I'm pleased, to, I'm pleased to say, I mean, I'm old enough to say, been there, done that, but I've been to their clinics. I saw the magic that they were doing. It was all done with healthy nutrition. Are there, for, for that triad that you just mentioned, is it, does that come as a blend or do women have to go out and buy those individually from their um, health food store? You know, I used to see it as a blend, but I think you've got to go out and get it individually. So again, it's 500 milligrams of choline, methionine and inositol, but they're easily found in good health food stores. Okay. Now, are there any, any particular cases where that would be counterintuitive or counterproductive? So for example, a, a, a cancer patient, would, would that be dangerous? I mean, that's hard to say, actually. I don't think so. I can just tell you that the choline at 500 milligrams three times a day will actually decongest a fatty liver. So we know that this is good for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or distress. We know that this is good for women that are suffering from any kind of anxiety because these are very calming nutrients. And it also is very good if you have some weight to lose because they're, they're defatting, they're decongesting, they're actually lipotropic, very important to get rid of your excess body fat. So it works on all different levels, to be quite frank with you. The only thing I would ever check with a doctor, God forbid, if you have some kind of cancerous condition or you're going through chemo or radiation, is to check the herbs, which can be very counterproductive. Right. Okay. That, yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. And, and also, I mean, individuals would have to, individuals are going to have their own unique cases. So I love that that's just um, general health. So thank you. General health. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, what a plethora of information you are. You could talk for hours and hours on all of these topics. <laughs> and, uh, I, know, I know that the audience is going to be um, really excited to hear this interview, Anne Louise. And then also, I know I follow you on Instagram. Um, so you post phenomenal articles on Instagram as well. So followers can keep hearing from you and learning from you on Instagram and Facebook, right? And now Pinterest. Oh, wow. That's great. Uh, well, do you have any final tips that you'd like to share with the audience today? I'm trying to think what I think is important for women to know. We know how important the minerals are. I would say that the minerals are the key to everything. People are now talking about their genes and everybody's getting their genes decoded and this, that, and the other. I think that that is not as important as getting the toxins out, the minerals in, good water, good food, good fats, and that's where your good omega-6s, your omega-3s come in handy, and making sure that your water is actually the purest water that you can get on the planet, which means that you have to make sure that it is low copper, less than P 
0.01 per parts per million. So we're going to prevent people from having Alzheimer's, any kind of menopausal dysfunction. We can all grow old together till the age of 120. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see you again. And uh, my goodness, what a joy it was to um, speak with you today and just to hear all of your, your information for everyone. So Anne Louise, thank you so much. And then also, you know what, I think when we spoke, you said you're actually working on another book right now, right? Radical Longevity, which is why that Alzheimer's piece was so very uh, current and so very apropos for discussion today, because it's something that I had researched for the book. Yes, it'll be very interesting to see how we can prevent any kind of these diseases, and we all should be living till 120. So Admea Asrim, as they say in the Bible. Mm. Thank you. Well, um, from my heart to yours, uh, thank you so much for taking the time today for all of us. And um, I really look forward to, to speaking with you again. And uh, maybe when COVID is done, we can have you actually in a, on an on a in-person panel if, if life ever re goes back to that. <laughs> God willing. Thank you. <laughs> um, take care and have a lovely afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you.